Hey, Sean Jantz here, and I'm going to do a quick battle plan for Monday, January 30th. And I'm going to do it on Slash ES, which is the S&P 500, and Slash TF, which is the small cap 2000. And uh, every single Sunday night, I'm going to start here on Slash ES. I start, actually, on the daily chart. So what I'm doing here is I want to start on a large time frame. I want to start on the daily. I want to look back two, three, four months and kind of see, really, where are we? What have we been doing? Where are we? What could we be looking for in the week ahead? Are we overbought on a larger time frame? I can use a lot of this information that I'm seeing here uh, for my daily trades and my weekly binary options as well. So when I look at this slash, S slash GS daily chart, um, we, we went basically to the tick to the 2300, right? That's when we kind of had our massive little bull run. Uh, Trump signed some stuff, earnings earnings were pretty strong we had a pretty big bull run to the upside uh, last week and but going into Friday we actually caught uh, resistance on this daily chart our daily chart has gotten pretty overbought and we had basically almost a 20 point uh, to the move to the downside and then we move to our four hour chart we are actually currently inside right not inside it's almost done right it's almost done completing its four hour candle sell trigger right so all the four hour chart does is very very simple I just wish more people could understand this and I think you a lot of traders through over the years hundreds of people thousands I think they overcomplicate this and I'm not sure how to make this any more simpler than I can all charts do is cycle that is all they do uh, we cycle down we cycle up we cycle down we cycle up we cycle down. This is still basically almost done finishing its four hour candle sell trigger, right? And I and I prepared everybody for the sell trigger as well. I told everybody that we were massively overbought. We we're gonna catch a sell trigger and sure enough we did. I sold the NASDAQ weekly and I sold a NASDAQ daily. So it's basically the same same indice and I just I just picked the NASDAQ instead and made a decent amount of money. And um, because I had to stop loss one of my trades I had to stop loss because we made such a huge move up but then I just got on top of it and sold again it's that simple and I have multiple videos teaching you how to just roll your losing trades stay with your bias and eventually you're gonna get your money back that's how it always works all things cycle and so already um, Sunday night markets open Sunday night and we've had a little bit of a move down so market actually opened lower I'll explain that to you here in a second. But when we look at this four hour chart, we were actually, before that big bull move right there, we were actually in the tightest monthly range the stock market had ever been in in, in the last 52 years. I'll show you the article if you want it. But we were in the tightest range and then we had finally a break up, break out. Now we're kind of coming back to that initial range. So when we look at this four hour chart, we're not necessarily overbought. We're not necessarily oversold either. Okay, we're kind of coming back down in here into decision time. Here's our range high. So in my notes here, I want to go ahead and write down 2276, 2277, 74. Uh, so 76, 75, 77. Kind of that range right there is kind of you can kind of see that's range high uh, from that January range high, right? And then back up to the upside, we have 2286 back up to the upside, and then all the way back up. If these bulls want to show some strength, go ahead and run all the way back up there. We'll write down uh, 93 to 90, 92 to 93. So now what we do is we move to our 15 day, 15 minute plot chart. And what we're doing here is we're just looking for structure, we're looking for the best places to buy. Best places to sell, we're looking for support, resistance, supply, and demand zones, and we're looking for trend lines, we're looking for ranges, this is what we're looking for, where we need zero indicators, you should be not trading with any indicators as far as um, finding structure, you should not be paying for that junk, okay, because I'm going to prove to you every single day you don't need it. So what we're doing here is what I like to do, to, just to keep it simple, I always start on the deviations and then I look left to see if there's structure there. This bubble right here, 2299 and a half, that is all time high since the beginning of time. So we don't have any structure on our plus one. We then look at our plus 0.5. We will have structure on this plus 0.5. 
I don't foresee this going all the way up there, but of course, I'm always pre I'm always ready for anything and everything. So there is a long-term, long-term bull target tomorrow would be 2297 back to all-time highs. We're going to have some structure here from value from we got two POCs and then we have value area high right there. We'll have structure here Monday and set and value area low. Then of course we got quite a bit of structure to the downside. I want to highlight this minus 0.5 and show you when we look left. I want to show you something that you've got to be looking for and I don't talk about it a lot, but you've got to find this stuff. I guess this the term we can use I guess we can kind of call them inflection points. This is what I mean. Let's go ahead and actually zoom in and show you. So check this out. So notice on Tuesday, we had a huge, huge bull run on Tuesday, and we stopped right there at 2280, and then we sold off going into the end of the day, literally to the tick, 2280, okay? Then Wednesday night, we break up above 2280, then look, 2280 then holds as support, we catch a bunch of buy volume, and we go in to make all new highs. So, what does that tell us? We know that 2280, look at when you can find stuff like this, 2280, then 2280 holds, you want to find points like that, what I call inflection points, and you can use all of that information uh, through your trading day, and you can write that stuff down in your notes. So now let's zoom back out. 2280 is now exactly our minus 0.5 deviation. So what I'm going to be looking for is potential buy triggers right off of this minus 0.5. We've already had two inflection points off of that level. So notice that we're, we're about three points off of it now. And so I wouldn't want to be buying nothing until we go down there and touch. And then I want to try and enter off of a one minute higher low. Okay. And then, of course, if we get through minus 0.5, we use that inflection point as a breakout. And then we hold lower highs. We could be off to the races running back down to this minus 1 deviation and look left. We actually got really, really good structure on our minus 1 with lots of inflection points, right? Resistance, 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 breakout, support. See how we can also use that minus one as a long-term bear target tomorrow as well. So now what we do, we see all the structure. We got in the broad picture, right? We understand what's going on on the daily, the four hour chart. We understand, we see it. We see the range. Now we're gonna zoom in and we're gonna pre-plan every single trade before it even happens. If you were making trades other than what I'm drawing, no wonder you're losing so much. The only trades I'm going to make tomorrow are the ones I'm about to draw right now. So let's first talk about if this chart goes higher. The first thing I'm going to be looking for is I will look for potential retracements and sell triggers right here at value area high, Monday POC and set. So let me show you that picture here. The only place I want to sell. If we, so am I going to be selling 2285 tomorrow? No. I'm going to be selling value area low, set, and Monday's POC as long as there's a sell trigger there. That's the number four way to profit from that box is to look for sell triggers at value area low. I also want to highlight this. So you can't see this on Hike and Ashy candles. But if we look here, we actually have what we call a gap. A gap is when market closes on Friday and then Sunday night it opens with a gap. So here's the deal. Roughly 90% of the time, gaps get filled. What that means is price will 90% of the time retrace to where the gap started. Here's the catch on that 90%. Um, that figure is based off of a day, hourly, weekly, monthly, yearly, um, decades. No joke. So that 90% is based on, you don't know when it's going to fill. That's the issue. But 90% of the time, stocks, when they open with a gap like this, they go ahead and fill back to where the gap started. 90% of the time, the catch is, you just don't know when the gap will fill. So we'll just always remember that if it doesn't fill tomorrow for the week, let's remember that we have a Sunday night gap. Don't forget that. Okay? Then what I'll be looking for if these bulls want to go ahead and show some strength. Get through set Monday POC and hold higher lows, then we could be, and I want to look for entries. So then I want to look for uh, buy triggers 
and this is spreads or at the money binaries and then I take my profit at value area high and that would be an 80% roll uh, to the upside so price comes outside of when if price comes back inside value and holds higher lows there's an 80% chance price is going to run up there and touch value area high once we get up there, I definitely can look for my sell triggers at VA high. So let me show you that picture here from the training. It's the number one way to profit from that box. I will also be looking for sell triggers on these two POCs as well. Okay, and then if these bulls, we just talked about the plus 0.5 all time high. I mean, I don't foresee this happening, but if these bulls wanna just go ahead and show some crazy strength. By the way, I just wrote down 93 to 94 in my notes. Ching, 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 that's Thursday, Friday, POC. I don't foresee this happening, but if they get up above and then hold higher low again, right? So you wanna try and enter right there. And then I can use the plus 0.5 all-time highs as my long-term take profit target as a bull, okay? Long-term, I don't see that happening, but I'm ready for everything and I'll be in the room. If we make our way back up to that level right there, obviously I'm gonna be looking for sell triggers and I will also be looking to sell weeklies all the way up there I'd love to sell maybe above 20 23 20 uh, for a sell price of 22 to 30 so if we actually do make it up there I'll be selling weeklies okay now let's talk about if we go lower we kind of already discussed it but I'll be looking for buy triggers off the minus 0.5 and if these bears want to do some damage and just tanksville this chart all the way in that daily chart you see the daily chart right our daily chart, we're currently inside of a daily candle sell trigger. We're inside of one right now. See how you can kind of see that when you see the larger time frames, we are currently inside of a daily candle sell trigger. So that means that these bears, that daily chart could tank us all the way down to the minus one. So get through the minus 0.5 and then hold lower highs, lower highs. You want to enter on a one minute lower high, one minute candle lower high. And then I'll put our final take profit on the minus one uh, deviation tomorrow. So here's the deal. Every single place this chart goes tomorrow, you got a plan. You shouldn't be trading anything other than that. And if you are, it's no wonder why you're struggling or blah, blah, blah. And you need to be recording yourself trading so I can watch you and so I can know what you know and know what you don't know. Show me what you're doing. Show me your entries. Be like, hey, I'm looking to sell this. This reason why this is the binary I'm going to sell. This is the price I'm going to sell, and this is when and where I'm going to take profit. Show me all that, and I'll help you, and I'll develop you into a legit trader. But you have to record and show me what you're doing. And you'll have all the videos on how to record yourself, and you can reach out to Ryan Smith, and he'll help you too. Okay, I, I'm already running long, so I just want to quickly show you the small cap 2000 chart. It's a little different, uh, but the concepts are the same. I'm just going to actually draw this real quick. If we go higher, I got potential sell triggers at value area low. And actually, this is gonna be an awkward value area box because we got set and then we got two POCs and then we got value area high. Uh, let, me, let me form the basis of this quickly on our four hour TF. Four hour TF, four hour chart is actually pretty oversold. Notice that this is, these are transformers is, have actually uh, extended themselves they've gone beyond the oversold level all every single line is now beyond the, the oversold level and this is coming into the oversold um, um, oversold support Keltner so back up to the if these bears if the bulls actually want to show some strength we got 1369 let's write that number down and then all the way back up to the highs let's write down 1376 so obviously you can see the bias is to the upside, but don't forget this chart is currently inside of a weekly candle sell trigger. See that right there? So this chart is, I've been talking about this now for a month. This chart is inside of a weekly candle sell trigger, right? But our four hour chart is trying to hit a buy trigger. You gotta see it all. You have to see it all. It may seem hard, but after your six month or a year of doing this, Trust me, it's going to make sense. Just don't give up so quickly. Okay, uh, so let's look at this. Uh, if we go lower, we got the minus 0.5 as potential buy triggers. But let's first talk about if we go higher. I got potential sell triggers at value area low. I will also be looking for sell triggers at set. 
So let me show you normal candles and you'll be able to see that gap. Same thing as the yes. We got a gap right there, so be prepared for that to fill. Once we fill, I can look for sell triggers at set. If we get through set and hold higher lows, we've got an opportunity for an 80% roll back up to the upside. And then on my notes here, I have 69 uh, written down, and I also have uh, 76 written down, which is literally 69 is right there at value rate high in these POCs. 76 is going to be our plus 0.5 deviation in Friday's POC. So I got target resistance, and then I got target resistance. See how cool that is? You'll know exactly what to do if this chart goes higher. You go beyond the plus 0.5. Uh, please ask me in the chat room. Uh, I can look for potential buy triggers off of that minus 0.5 as well. This buy trigger is actually better than ES is why? Because the four hour chart is oversold more than ES is. is. And if this chart gets through the minus 0.5, I got nothing for you because our four-hour chart is so oversold. I don't really know. I don't think I want to be selling when our four-hour chart looks like that. So please ask me in the chat. I only I want to quickly show you slash in Q. This chart's the most overbought overbought out of all four of them. Our weekly chart is getting so so close to a a massive sell trigger, and our in Q actually gapped as well. And I want to sell a weekly on this chart. And here's what I want to happen. I want this chart to retrace back up. You know, hopefully value rate low doesn't hold as support. But if it does, you can look for a sell trigger there. But I'd love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Check this out. Let me erase. You don't need indicators. Please don't be paying for indicators. And then go to normal candles. Look at this gap. This gap is big. We got closed here and then we opened here. So I'd love more than anything for an 80% rule. Get through Friday's POC, hold high or low. We can spread this up to set and value rate high, right? We can look to spread this back up. Once we get there, back up to this range high, that's all time highs. I wanna sell weeklies up there as high as I possibly can, weeklies, okay? So wake up, be ready to go this week and comment if you have any questions and make sure that you're recording everything you're doing.